Today we are bringing all of the MMA news straight to you with timestamps if you'd like to skip to any part of the video. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle, I'm your guy with too many YouTube channels, and welcome back to everything that you missed in MMA this week. This is where we go through all of the MMA news, and again guys, if you'd like to skip to any particular part of the video, timestamps will be there if you'd like to skip to any part. Let's get into the news for today. Starting off with a little bit of news on Francis Ngannou and the MMA community, because Francis Ngannou has actually been being made fun of this week because, of course, we all know he got knocked out by, by I was about to say Tyson Fury. <laughs> we all know that he just got knocked out, right, by Anthony Joshua. And Francis Ngannou came out and he actually said, it wasn't me in there. It was somebody else. I And what he was saying was he didn't feel good. He didn't feel like himself. But a lot of people are really looking at Ngannou and doing what the MMA community has done because everybody was riding with Ngannou, right? But now we're seeing everybody just turn around and go, you were never supposed to win that first fight, Francis. That was a fluke, and now we all know what you're going to be like in boxing. <laughs> it's just crazy to me that the MMA community is just so quick to turn on somebody. Don't get me wrong. I have been very open that I'm a Francis Ngannou hater, so it's kind of funny to me. But it's just it's insane to me what we're saying. It is insane <laughs> that everybody's turning around and hating on Francis Ngannou. But to be honest with you, it was a little bit of a... I don't know if it's a dumb thing to say. It's just... Yeah, just take accountability for your loss. I always point back to Dominic Cruz back in the day when he lost to Cody Garbrandt. That is the way you should take a loss. And we've seen lots of fighters take losses well over the career. But Francis Ngannou isn't really doing that right now. And he's been talking about he wants another boxing fight. How boxing owes him. He's not talking about fighting in the PFL, which people are getting frustrated with. So it's just shocking to me to see a bunch of people turn on Francis Ngannou this week. Next up, Sharaputin Magomedov is able to fight in the U.S. now. He just got a visa, so he we can expect some fight news, hopefully. The first fight he had was an absolute banger, and I cannot wait to see him fight again. I'm not saying, like, I'm going to cheer for him or anything. Seems like a little bit of a sketchy person. But <laughs> I just, sorry, every time we talk about this stuff, I think back to that video of him just beating up the couple kissing. It's just, like, it's not funny, but... You know what I'm talking about, right? So, apparently, he's he was restricted to fight overseas. Now, he can fight in the U.S., and that's very exciting because I think he is a solid, solid prospect. Now, guys, we actually got a Conor McGregor update. Conor McGregor is went on Ariel's show. He's been, he's been promoting the movie Roadhouse that he's in, and he's just been all over social media lately. And Conor, I don't know if he was being vague. Like, I listened to the interview with him, but I listened to a few interviews with him, actually, but... A lot of the things that he was talking about was working on the movie, but he was also talking about his return to the UFC, and the biggest takeaway from it kind of is that, according to Connor, there's a lack of communication from the UFC, but this morning, actually, I just listened to Kamaru Usman and Henry Cejudo's podcast, which is fantastic, by the way, if you haven't checked that out, and they had Dana White on, and Dana's saying, there is no miscommunication, there's no lack of communication from our side, we want Connor to be done with his other obligations before he fights in the UFC, and I'm like, oh, that kind of makes sense, but... We, don't, we, we never know what side's right, right? If I had to assume, I would assume that Dana White's telling the truth and Conor McGregor just either is asking for too much money, Conor McGregor is, wants to balance the movies and the proper 12, everything else that he's doing, along with training, but the UFC probably wants him to just focus on Michael Chandler if he comes back. It's just a really kind of weird situation. We don't really know exactly what's right, but Conor McGregor, according to Conor, Wants to come back, he's ready to fight, and the UFC just won't book him. Next up, guys, we have Layla Machado Gary. <laughs> oh, boy. She went viral because she called out the MMA guru, Sean Strickland, and the MMA community, which is insane to me. All she was talking about was people are posting lies, and people are so quick to hate on her and hate on Ian Gary's lifestyle. And if you guys want to watch a video, it's a few minutes long, and I'm not going to lie to you, it's a waste of your time. She comes in, and obviously... I, I gotta be nice. <laughs> I, I gotta be really nice because they, you see a lot of people responding to it and it's like, well, she wanted attention. Now she's got attention because of course, what she wore in the video, who she's talking about, you, you know what she's doing, right? You just, you know what she's doing. It's crazy to me that Ian Gary's letting her seemingly run his life so much and it, the whole situation is just weird, man. And Colby's doing a real, real good job. Might as well talk about that now too because Colby Covington actually made a video on Ian Gary and they've been bouncing back and forth a little bit and Colby is killing him this time around. Colby Covington is doing so good with his roast and I can't remember who it was. It might've been Lucas Tracy. Somebody was spoke about and I, I completely agreed with it but I never really thought about it this way is when Colby makes videos where he's not yelling because then you end up with the fifth layer of hair type stuff, right? Which I personally still find really funny how that turns into a meme. But when he's calm 
and he just talks like this. He's like, oh, Ian Gary, you want to fight? You know, just like very calm. He's not screaming or anything like that. That's when his best work is done because I can't, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head what he called Ian. And he used his record to talk about something and then ended up calling him. He sits in the corner. I don't remember off the top of my head, man. You just got to go check out that video. I'm sure you've seen it, but there were two from Colby Covington right now. Ian Gary's been trying to come back at him, and it's just not working out, dude. It's not working out. Colby is absolutely killing him, and I made a whole video talking about this if you're interested. Colby is a genius for approaching the fight this way because Ian Gary is the only one right now, after that performance that Colby Covington just gave, that Colby will still have the fans on his side. Great move by Colby Covington. Next up, a very quick piece of news because there's not too much to dive into with this. The UFC antitrust lawsuit just had an update and there is a settlement. They reached a settlement of $335 million. So they really don't want to go to trial, but there's not too much to really dive into with that. So I'm going to leave it at that. Next up, Walt Harris is back in the news. And why would you think that Walt Harris would be in the MMA news? Because Walt Harris doesn't really, there's not really much that ever comes out about him. He suspended four years for PED use. <laughs> We all knew that he was using, and now it's official that he is suspended for four years. But honestly, speaking about people who aren't usually around the MMA scene, Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey actually came out and finally talked about that Holly Holm fight. And how has it been since the old Ellen show that Ronda Rousey's been talking about the Holly Holm fight? I think it might be. Regardless, Ronda Rousey has been talking about something that she's never spoken about in her UFC, and she had a bunch of concussions, and she was afraid that she wouldn't get cleared to fight. And that's why she lost to Holly Holm. And she vows to never return to WWE or the UFC again. She's pissed off. She's not regretful in her career. But uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, bitter. She's bitter. She's very, very bitter about everything that's happening. And honestly, the way I look at it, it's crazy to me, actually. Because people, it, again, the MMA community is just switching on people like they do with Francis Ngannou. Now people are saying, oh my god, Ronda, I hope you get the help you need. But I'm sitting here, I'm like, no, dude, this chick... This chick just wants more attention. She wants to make another excuse why she should have never lost to Holly Holm. We all know how that works. She didn't move her head. She thought she was she could stand with her. And I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just a little bit annoying to me. Now, guys, I do want to talk about all the fight announcements this week. I'm going to fire them off for you. So we have Jonathan Martinez versus Jose Aldo at UFC 301. I can't believe that Jose Aldo is returning. Jonathan Martinez is a very, very underrated fighter, in my opinion. I absolutely love watching that guy fight. And it's going to be crazy to see Jose Aldo back at Brazil. It's going to be a real fun one. Now... We also have Paulo Costa saying that he booked a fight. We don't know the opponent. We don't know the date, but it's coming from Paulo Costa. Take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> Waldo Cortez Acosta is taking on Robelis Despine on May 11th, which is a very interesting matchup because they're keeping Robelis busy. I like the fact that he's not sitting out. He's getting right back in there. Had a quick fight. No damage. I really like this. Plus, they're trying to really, really get back at Waldo Cortez Acosta, man. <laughs> so... According to the PFL owner, Francis Ngannou versus Renan Ferreira is happening later this year, but there is no date for it. It's not official. Again, take that one with a grain of salt. Puka Tomor versus Rayana Amanda is happening on June 8th back in the UFC. Same with Tim Means versus Uros Medic on April 27th. And in one championship, we have Cade Rutillo versus Francisco Lowe at one fight night 2021. Excuse me. I absolutely love watching both Tim Means and Cade Rutolo. Jonathan Martinez, I'm probably the most excited for out of every fight announced right here. I know everybody's been talking about Jose Aldo, but I am honestly such a big Jonathan Martinez fan. I love watching him fight, been watching him even before he, the UFC. It's He's a very exciting fighter, man. Very underrated, and I think he's going to win this fight. I can't wait to watch all of these. But guys, speaking of fights that you should watch, check out this early breakdown of UFC 300 right here. I would love to see you there or in the next video, guys. Take care.